Perfect, Mandy. Thank you very much. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to present uh, our content on the new multicultural consumer. And um, I think at, at the end of this course, uh, what you will find is that uh, we want to present some of the strategies that can help um, eye care professionals and industry professionals on how they can uh, capitalize on the great opportunity that the new multicultural consumer uh, presents. So um, these ethnic minority populations are increasing very rapidly throughout the United States. And despite the challenging economy that we're still facing, the buying power among these groups, which are Hispanic, African American, and Asian American, is, is growing and it, rep and it represents a tremendous opportunity for, for eye care professionals to grow their businesses. But in order to address these opportunities, there's, there's some things that eye care professionals need to understand and, uh, and find the best way to communicate with them and to understand the, the mindset that this uh, multicultural consumer is in uh, currently. So again, this, this course will offer some interesting insights into the new uh, consumer and uh, will include some insights into each of the three uh, groups which we already mentioned, which are Hispanic, African American, and Asian American. And uh, hopefully after this uh, presentation, you'll have some ideas on uh, some strategies that you might want to be putting together as, uh, as you want to start capitalizing on, these, uh, on this uh, new opportunity. So uh, moving into our first slide, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the consumer has a new mindset, has a new spending mindset. About 80% of consumers are shopping more mindfully. And overall, the average American is carrying less debt. 50% uh, of the people that were uh, interviewed in this research study um, said that they wouldn't uh, plan on changing their ways. In fact, 67% say that rece the recession has reminded them what's really important in life, and that's a good thing. So overall, this is a very good thing for individuals, although it does represent a little bit of tougher times for uh, businesses. But again, you know, all we have to do is uh, analyze and interpret all this information to see how we can uh, offset these, uh, these challenging times. So moving on to the next slide, uh, we find that the consumers are in a new buying approach. So number one, they're focused more on the substance uh, of the products that they buy, and they're also going to be on the, uh, focused on the relationships that they have with the companies that they buy from. Uh, again, uh, looking into the research, 60% of consumers prefer to buy from companies that share their personal values. So again, uh, they see the company as a person, and if this company shares the same values with the consumer, they would prefer to buy from that company. And 54% pay attention to the environmental and social impact of the products that they buy. So again, being a responsible uh, company, a, a responsible eye care professional, is going to be very important to try to attract this multicultural uh, consumer. And um, this uh, absolutely represents a business opportunity, as I mentioned uh, in the introduction. The spending growth of, the, uh, of these groups, of these minorities, uh, exceeds the, the growth that the general population is, uh, is seeing. It, it actually, by the year 2015, will account for 25% of the nation's buying power. So African Americans, Hispanics, and Asian Americans will account for 25% of the nation's buying power. So understanding the mindset of this group and properly position yourself is going to be a key uh, aspect of uh, capitalizing or you know, reaching out to these groups. First, let's take a, le first take, let's take a look sorry, to uh, our Hispanic consumer. Uh, we look at the numbers, their growth in buying power is, uh, is tremendous. Currently, they account for 16.3% of the U.S. population, but by the year 2050, they will account for 30% of the U.S. population. Uh, their buying power is, is currently around the $1 trillion mark, and in a couple of years, by 2015, the buying power will be $1.5 trillion. So that's that's a that's a significant amount of uh, of buying power that they that they hold. So uh, takes let's take a look at their mindset. They're very hopeful. Okay, 
The recession has made them vulnerable, but still their outlook is very positive. When you take a look at it, two out of three believe they can get ahead if they work hard. So that's what they're going to do. And half of the Hispanics believe that their financial situation will improve over the next year. Keep in mind, um, I am a, I'm a, a Hispanic. I was born and raised in Mexico. Uh, and I cannot remember a time from, you know, as far back as I can remember, uh, that there hasn't been some type of economic turmoil in, in, in Mexico. And it, it's pretty similar for uh, a lot of the countries in Latin America. So you'll find that at least in first and probably second generation Hispanics or foreign born Hispanics, that the same situation applies. So again, uh, we're kind of used to uh, economic turmoil and difficult situations, which is probably not as, uh, as prevalent here in the U.S. given the, the economic stability of the country. So again, it's a hopeful mindset and it's just a, a positive outlook on, on uh, the situation improving. When we look at spending patterns for Hispanics, the average Hispanic family will spend more than the non-Hispanic white family over the course of a lifetime. And this, uh, in part, is because Hispanic households are comprised by more people and you know, uh, they tend to pool their income, their salaries, into uh, the household, which again, if, if you have two or three uh, different incomes in one household, that's going to allow for a little bit more spending than the non-Hispanic uh, families. Uh, this consumer is more brand conscious, a, wants the latest technology, values brands that support causes, and is the most likely to seek opinions from others. And we're going to look a little bit ahead and, and we start in, in the next slide as we look at cultural values. We see the value of familismo, which tends to uh, circle around family. Um, Hispanics tend to shop in groups particularly with family. So this is something that, that's going to be important for eye care professionals to understand because they might bring uh, the mother, the father, uh, the kids, uh, brothers, sisters, and they will be asked uh, for help in the buying decision. So one, one important thing to consider is to welcome and involve the family members in the whole uh, process of uh, the buying decision because they're going to turn to these to these members of their family, and they're going to ask for their opinions, and uh, and it's going to be important to have them uh, them involved. Another important uh, value that is key to Hispanics is respect, and it's basically respect, which is based on age, gender, or status. For example, many Hispanic patients would prefer to be called or addressed by Mr. or Mrs., Señor or Señora, which is uh, the Spanish equivalent rather than by the first name. It just kind of depends. And this, this a, lot, a, lot, a lot of times will being spoken by the first name, but in a, a older uh, group, an older Hispanic, he might prefer to be addressed as Mr. or Mrs. through their last name. Um, and this another important aspect here is that because the eye care professional is seen as a figure of authority, they will be less inclined to ask questions. They don't want to be seen as challenging what uh, the information that they're receiving. So it'll be very important to encourage an open dialogue and make sure that what they're under, that they're understanding everything that that, that uh, is being all the information that is being given to them, because that's going to ensure uh, a good understanding of this. And finally, the value of personalismo, which is, uh, you know, it reflects the importance of a one-to-one -one relationship between the patient and the eye care professional. And this is going to be very important. I think this not only applies to Hispanics, but it, it applies to people in general. We always have like to have that, you know, warm relationship with, uh, with the people that we interact with. So it, it's, it will um, be important to ask them about their family, ask them about themselves, and this is going to be also a great um, fact-finding mission, if you will, because as you're trying to establish this rapport and establish this connection with your patient, and as you find more about themselves, like what the activities they enjoy, what sports they do, what hobbies they have, this is also going to give you a lot of insight into their family history, for example, uh, that could identify some potential uh, pitfalls in their eye health. And it also is going to tell, tell you a lot of the lifestyle 
and, um, and interest that they have. So it also will uh, suggest or be able to give you some, uh, some interesting clues as to what products they might be more interested in based on their, uh, their, their persona, what they enjoy doing, their hobbies, and their interests. So again, it's, it's a good uh, way to establish this rapport and get to know the person uh, better. Um, when we look at the role of language, uh, it's important to use bilingual um, or in-language materials. Uh, most of the people that you will find, a good majority of them will speak English and have a fairly decent understanding of the language. But again, it, it kind of becomes part of the value is if they have the information in Spanish, they feel more comfortable with it, and it's also going to establish that that uh, link, and it's just going to show that that interest in providing them the materials in their own language. Uh, so again, you can use uh, bilingual or in-language uh, materials, and if you have the opportunity, it might not hurt to have a, a bilingual staff person that could uh, help out in any difficult situation where uh, language might be a problem. But again, um, you know, it, it's just uh, it just shows a lot of goodwill, and it helps. Uh, build that relationship with uh, with the with the patient. Mm -hmm. So now, when we look at the new African American consumer, that's uh, that was uh, our section on Hispanics. Now we pass on to the African American uh, consumer. We see that today they account for 12.6 percent of the U.S. population, and it's expected to grow to about 15.7 by the year 2050. So while the growth is not as dramatic, for, for example, compared to Hispanics, it's still quite large and also their buying power is going to increase. It will account in the year 2015 for about $1.2 trillion. And, uh, and that's, that's quite a significant growth in, in terms of the, the buying power that we will see from, uh, from African Americans. So again, when we look at their, uh, their mindset, it's very positive. Unemployment rates in this economy are still high, but their outlook is very good. Um, the number of employed African Americans uh, dropped in, in, the, in the recent economy, but despite that, the youthful demographic is optimist that, um, that they will be creating more jobs, and um, they still remain, con remain conscious excuse me, about saving and lowering the debt, their uh, debt burden. They're more educated and they're more business savvy. And again, they're optimistic with, uh, with the election of President Obama, and they tend to be highly entrepreneurial. In fact, African Americans are more likely than the general population to dream about starting their own business, whether it's small or big, but they do uh, tend to be more entrepreneurial. So that's a little bit on their, on their mindset. Let's look at their spending patterns. Today, the African American consumer is less interested in coupons. So I mean, they they do they do want to save money, but they're less likely to use coupons than the general population, um, because this is a younger uh, group. A lot of them are under the age of 18. They're also known as consumer trendsetters. They're very brand conscious, but they're also more interested in brands that support good causes. They're very likely to be interested in the late, the latest technology, and as Hispanics, they're going to be likely to seek approval from others, particularly their peers. This is going to be something very, uh, very important. And again, an interesting fact is 86% of African Americans are likely to say that a brand name is the best indication of quality. So they associate a quality brand name with, uh, with the quality of the, of the product. When we look at uh, their cultural values, they have a, a tremendous respect for companies that give back. So, you know, a good way to uh, have a good inroads or have good standing with this community is participating in local health fairs, events, or support a local charity. You, they're also big on, on their church and their community. So, again, getting involved with the church and the community, maybe doing some vision screenings, maybe offering some, uh, some uh, health fairs education to the community, that's going to be a big a loyalty builder in this community. They have a desire for a positive cultural image. So again, display a lot of point of sale materials that have a, an African American imagery which highlights them in a positive way. They are also uh, very aspirational in terms of higher education. 
So again, please never assume a level of education or financial ability to make a purchase because a lot of times we can't see that and we can't you know, just judge a person by their appearance. So again, never assume their level of education and treat everybody as, uh, you know, as they're uh, financially able to make a purchase. Don't uh, try to discriminate. Uh, interest in brand names and technology, this is going to be a key, uh, key aspect of it. So again, just talk to them about all the different new technologies that we have in terms of AR coatings, in terms of photochromic lenses, in, in terms of the new uh, ways of surfacing the lenses, uh, maybe some digital surfacing. Again, show, uh, show them the technology that they're looking to, uh, to learn more about and talk to them about that. That's going to be very, very important. Now when we look at the new Asian American consumer, we see them uh, also in, in their numbers. They're the fastest growing group. Today they account for 5% uh, of the U.S. population and they will triple in size by the year uh, 2020. So uh, it's, it's dramatic growth that they're, they're experiencing. And again, their buying power is also going to rise by 42% over the next five years. Their outlook on the economy is also going to be very positive. The recession has made them less vulnerable, but the outlook remains positive. This because the Asian Americans have higher levels of education, so they hold more of the top level jobs, which is going to uh, you know, mean that they'll have higher level incomes in order to uh, have that spending ability. Uh, they're least likely to live in poor neighborhoods, which again is just going to give them that um, that positive outlook in, uh, in in difficult times. When we look at their spending patterns, they um, are around 33 percent visit department stores one to three times a week. They spend in general most in all areas. The teens spend more on fashion than any other group. They're very much into online shopping and the internet use is increasing. So uh, online shopping or just you know, using the internet to get visibility amongst the Asian American population is going to be a key point. The Asian American consumer, again, is more likely to be focused on technology. He's more likely to seek opinions from others and more likely to value cost supporting brands. Uh, on, the, on the downside, they are a little bit less likely to favor American products, so again, this is something to uh, keep in mind as we're talking to this group. When we look at their cultural values and virtues, we must uh, highlight the importance of education. This is one of, as I mentioned in, in one of our previous slides, uh, they have these high levels of education. They're very driven by education. So again, always try to reinforce the link between good vision and school performance because that's going to be a key part. You know, in order to be able to exceed in school, you need to be able to read well, therefore you need to uh, see at your best. They will also have a, a high interest in brand names and fashion. So again, talk to them about the, uh, the brand names and the premium lens options that you have to offer because again, this is going to be a, grit, a big driver and it's going to generate a lot of interest, so it's going to capture their attention in this conversation. Um, they have a huge desire for harmony and social interaction. And what that means is that they don't want to antagonize people. They don't want to be uh, perceived as, uh, as trying to create conflict. So a lot of times, even though they don't fully understand what is being said, like if there's a language barrier potentially, uh, they might not be able to admit or recognize that they're not understanding, but just because they don't want to come across as uh, confrontational. So the, the desire for harmony is going to be very important. So it's very important, again, like with Hispanics, to encourage an open dialogue because this is going to ensure that we're going to have a great communication with them and also open that, uh, that good dialogue with, uh, with the patient. As with Hispanics, the role of language might become a hindrance. Uh, they're the least likely to feel comfortable communicating in English. Now, this doesn't mean that they don't speak English. They just don't feel as comfortable. So here again, using bilingual or in-language materials is going to be key. And again, if possible, hiring a bilingual staff uh, member would, uh, would be very helpful. Again, 77% of Asian Americans speak a language other than English at home. So again, language is going to be a, a, a key um, 
aspect when reaching out to the Asian American community. So now once we've uh, reviewed all these three different demographics, uh, an interesting question is what kind of strategy have you put in place to uh, try to reach out to these, uh, to these groups? For example, some of the questions that come to mind is what languages have you encountered in your uh, in your day to day, you know, do you do you see a lot of Asian Americans, a lot of his, uh, Hispanics, a lot of African Americans? How do you serve these patients who don't speak your language or who don't um, who might have a little bit of a communication barrier? Or what types of materials or communication tools would you find helpful? And here's an interesting uh, an interesting um, experience that I had. Uh, we were talking with with some with an eye care professional. And they were located in a very heavily Hispanic uh, populated area. And their impression was that they didn't really have any uh, Hispanic patients. And they're like, you know, no, this is not something that we, inc that we encounter regular regularly in our day to day. And, uh, you know, quite surprising uh, was this, this, uh, this fact because, you know, it's, it's a heavily populated area. And as we started to discuss a little bit further and, and kind of, you know, asking, ask these questions, you know, how do they reach out to them, how do, we realized that basically what they were is they weren't doing enough things to make it attract, the Hispanic population was not uh, feeling welcome in this practice. So what they had to do was kind of, you know, have more in-language materials, uh, have some signage that kind of you know, indicated that uh, that Spanish was was spoken, that they did have that um, that interest and that desire to appeal to them, and that changed their outlook, and then they they started to do these things. So again, this this these are some of the things that we can think about when uh, when reaching out to uh, to these groups. Mm -hmm. So as we look at attracting the new multicultural consumer, uh, and the, you know, after all these uh, these interesting. Um, growth opportunities that we've talked about. There's a few things that we can do, and uh, I will give you some of the some of the uh, possible fit, pitfalls or the barriers to entry that you might find, and also give you some suggestions on how to overcome them. So when we talk about barriers to entry, uh, we see that in all three groups, uh, African American, Hispanic, and Asian Americans, there's a very low eye health awareness. When you look at uh, the, the numbers, just four out of ten people visited the eye care professional in the past year. And among these groups, Hispanics and Asian Americans were more likely to have never so that a lot of 80% uh, of the, the learning uh, that a child experiences is through their eyes. So it's critical that they, they understand and recognize that, um, that it's going to uh, impact their learning ability dramatically. And again, you know, four out of ten visit the eye care professional. So reaching out and sending reminders is a great way to overcome uh, this barrier. Uh, secondly, many believe that wearing glasses can make their vision get worse, uh, particularly amongst Hispanics and African Americans. Twenty-five percent believe this, and more importantly, forty percent of Asian Americans believe that wearing glasses can make their vision get worse. And when you look at Asian Americans, they're less likely to make an appointment or correct their vision when for myopia. And when you look at the numbers, the Asian Americans are the most, um, the, the group that is most afflicted by high levels of myopia. So it's critical that they, they, uh, they utilize a type of correction to, um, for their myopia. And in general, ethnic minor minorities are more likely to believe that UV protection is only important in the spring and summer. So again, uh, reminding them that no matter what time of the year, no matter what part of the country they're in, it's important to protect their eyes from uh, UV uh, because they're also very afflicted by other uh, diseases that, that are affected or that a factor is uh, UV protection. So what does this group want? Today's multicultural consumer wants, uh, has more in common than with the general uh, population, but when it comes to eye care and eyewear preferences, there are some differences. And, and what you'll find is that a lot of them want a professional staff. That's one of the key things that they're looking for. They want their eye care professional to be a, a very professional, very well-informed, and also offer a lot of information and help them uh, get educated on all the important aspects of vision. So again, educating your consumer about their, 
uh, their higher risks, if there are, uh, the importance of protecting and caring for their vision is going to be critical. Um, most multicultural uh, consumers want the clearest vision possible, and again, this also uh, relates to our general market. And um, thirdly, they want a good price. So it doesn't mean that we have to give them a discount. It means that they're willing to spend on value-added products, provided that they understand the value that this, do that this does in providing that clearest possible vision. So again, it's going to be important to educate them on benefits and the importance of the value-added products such as AR, photochromics, uh, progressive lenses. And when we look at some of the tips or some of the things that you could do to attract and retain these multicultural patients, um, we have a few, a few ideas and suggestions. And I'm sure as, you're, as you've been walking through this presentation, you have also come up with some, uh, some interesting thoughts on how you can uh, reach out to these groups. But I think the one, the, the one and the most, not the, one of the easiest and, and important is to show community support while providing education. And again, it goes back to health fairs and local events. Uh, for example, if you, look, if, if you visit the local schools or support local uh, sporting programs, Schools are a great, uh, a great way to attract business and to reach out to these kids. Because when you look at teachers, for example, they spend uh, you know, five to six hours a day with kids. They're very able to identify any potential vision problems that a, that a child might, might experience. So you know, uh, reach out to them, talk to the kids, talk to the children on the importance of vision. Again, we mentioned 80% of what a child learns is, uh, is through their eyes. So again, that's a staggering statistic. And it, it makes for a great uh, conversation starter on why it's important to take care of their vision. Uh, partner with other local businesses or organizations, as I mentioned, um, within the African American uh, community, uh, with the local churches. You know that's going to be a tremendous door opener in, in you know doing providing vision screens. You know once maybe uh, once a month or you know every 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 other month do some type of vision screenings and and just you know. Do presentations, talk about uh, the eye diseases that uh, are more prone or more common amongst uh, these groups, and that's going to uh, buy a lot of goodwill. Advertise in the media that's read by these target patients, for example, in the church newsletter, uh, in a Hispanic um, local uh, flyer newspaper is going to be a good way to, uh, to get the word out and let them know that they're welcome in your, in your practice. Um, Practice ongoing patient outreach. Send uh, send out appointment reminders, phone calls. Uh, have a, a social media presence through Facebook, uh, through a lot of these uh, these new options like Yelp, uh, Facebook. These are also very good ways to uh, get the word out and also get uh, positive recommendations from actual consumers. Your actual patient base is working to get the word out on how good you are at what you do and taking care of their vision. And you know, finally, respect their differences, but try to treat them as an individual. So don't make assumptions, don't uh, try to stereotype, just you know, respect their differences, treat them as an individual, and this is going to go a very, very, very good way. So anyway, um, uh, this is the end of the uh, presentation. I thank you for your time, and if there are any questions, uh, I would appreciate it if you can let me know. And um, Again, I appreciate your time and taking the interest in participating in this uh, in this webinar. Okay, great. Thank you, Manuel. Um, I think it's very valuable information, and it's critical that we do understand the multicultural consumer. Um, and I will end the recording. Now.